Hello guys, welcome back. In the second part of our tutorial series, we are going to cover all of the brushes in edit mode. We are going to move from the most necessary tools to the ones that are more specific. If you have any background in modeling softwares, a lot of this is going to be familiar to you, but I'm going to assume that some people watching are new to all of this. When you open up the app, the brush palette is already visible, but probably without the modifier panel. You can bring it up by pressing the little triangle at the side of the palette, or keep on pulling down the thumbstick on your secondary controller, already in sculpt mode, and it's going to turn it on and off. As I mentioned in the last video, my main controller is the right one, and the secondary is the left one, as I'm right-handed. I'm going to talk about the contents of the modifier panel soon, but first let me quickly demonstrate the brushes one by one by showing what they generally do. The preset brush is the standard brush, which has quite a self-explanatory name. It is a basic sculpting brush, good for building up your shape or creating various details later on. Most tools are invertible. The easiest way to switch between them is by pressing the context menu button twice but the option is also accessible in the brush modification menu. Next up, there's the clay brush, sculpting clay strips on your mesh. The cursor of this brush is a cube, just note that the shape of the strokes will depend on the angle of your cursor while sculpting if Raycast is turned off. This is one of the differences compared to regular modeling softwares. It takes a while getting used to everything being in 3D, but it has so many advantages like the extended functionality of certain brushes. So these two are going to be your main sculpting tools in terms of general creation. And in combination with them, the smooth tool is also very essential, which allows you to even out any rough spots and is also very helpful for fixing topology. By the way, this is your preset alternative brush. You can activate alternative brush by pulling both of the main triggers and you can set a different alternative brush by selecting one of your tools while pulling the main trigger on your left controller. So basically your workflow could consist of a lot of going back and forth with these three tools. Anyways, if you want to undo or redo something, you can do it by moving the left thumbstick left for undo and right for redo. When drafting up your model, the move tool is also very nice to have, so you can relocate part of your existing geometry. For example, you can create the base of a head in seconds with this, just stretch out the sphere, create two eye sockets, pull out the nose proportionally, etc. With the inflate deflate tool, you can extend the mesh where your cursor touches it or make it shrink. Opposite to this, the mesh is going to extend towards your cursor with, for example, the standard brush. The snake hook tool comes handy when you'd want to create tentacle like shapes just simply pull it out from the mesh. Using the trim tool you can create a plain surface even with keeping the edges, as opposed to the flattened brush with which you can push or pull the mesh towards a previously set plane. With the next brush, you can pinch or crease the mesh. The next two brushes are the handy little stem tools, one of them being surface stem tool and the other one the 3D stem. So for surface stamp, we have to get familiar with alpha masks that basically affect the shape of your brush using a grayscale image. 
You can import your own alphas, so don't be afraid to get creative here. Note that you can use alpha masking with the standard brush, the clay tool and the paint brush as well. In this case, it's great for creating embossing. So if you choose an alpha, you can stamp it on the surface of your mesh. On the other hand, the 3D stamp tool is going to stamp or carve out primitive 3D shapes of your mesh. Next up, let's see the mask tool. Masking is used for covering up some part of your mesh where you don't want any commands to affect it or creating holes or maybe going ahead and inverting the mask, you get the idea. The last tool in relation to sculpting is the regular rice brush, which modifies how dense the topology is. There are two things left on our palette, and they are the paint tool and the paint bucket tool. With the right settings during saving, your model is going to keep the color information, but we are going to talk about this in the video covering the file menu. So these are your tools, now let's see how you can modify them. I'm going to open up the tool modification panel, as I said, either by pressing the little arrow or pulling down the left thumbstick. You can see that the sliders here are strength, that affects the intensity. Next one is size, that you can also adjust by pulling down or pushing up your right thumbstick. Then fall off, which affects how blurred or sharp your tool is going to be around the edges. And resolution, referring to the density of polygons created while sculpting. There are more options at the side. If you tick the circle next to strength, you'll turn on pressure sensitivity, which sets the strength according to how hard you're pulling the trigger. The next option is dynamic topology, near resolution. If you turn it off, your tool is going to modify the position of already existing vertices, but will not change the polygon number. If it's turned on, however, it adds or subtracts polygons based on the resolution you've set. The last option here is Steady Stroke, which helps you out with smoother strokes. You can also change your brush shape, which is not to be confused with an alpha setting, but let's not go into detail of that now. You can choose from a sphere, a cube, and a capsule. At the bottom you can find things like raycast, edit connected surfaces only, rotate along drag, and edit front faces only. 
So if Raycast is turned on, it will project the cursor on the mesh, similar to traditional cursor handling. If connected surfaces only is turned on, the tool is going to affect the mesh that is closer to the center of the cursor. The area that's closer is highlighted with blue. This is useful, for example, when editing pants or any parts that are too close to each other, like fingers, and let's say you'd only want to edit one part of them, this setting is the one for you. The front face is only setting is only going to modify the mesh turning towards the front of your cursor. Let's say you'd want to color the top of the head here. If front face is only is turned off, you'll have some trouble with the cursor touching the mesh at both sides. However, if you turn on front faces, it's only going to affect one side. The same thing happens with move tool, you can see it moves both sides if turned off and only the top if turned on and front faces only is an absolute necessity here. Rotate along drag rotates the cursor. The easiest way to demonstrate this is on clay tool with an alpha mask selected. You can see it rotates the pattern as you go. So this is your palette, as I said before, don't be afraid to mess around with the settings, find what works best for you, and thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next one, where we'll cover things in the scene mode and the file menu.